Hey, what's going on everybody? Joe Menza here, and we're going to do another video, Fast and Loose, and maybe do something a little bit different, hopefully. Um, I'm starting off with my three full hakefuls of water. And we're just going to let that roll down the page. I'll show you putting a really full hakeful on there. Now it doesn't really totally matter if you blend it and look at just let it run down the paper look at it cascading down then we'll just blend it in i like to get the entire sheet wet and i think that's a good way to start next up i'm taking a little yellow ochre you can use raw sienna. It's probably, I got a little yellow ochre and raw sienna sort of mixed together on my palette. And I'm just going to create a nice little effect with some light red and a little bit of cad yellow. This tends to dry back quite a bit, but I want kind of a little bit of a colorful horizon. This tends to dry back a lot for some reason more than other colors. And you notice how heavy I'm putting this on. Watch how much it dries back, you'll be surprised. Light red really dries back a lot. It seems really strong, but then it dries back quite a bit. And we're running down the paper here. We're not gonna worry about it too much. Now we're gonna take some ultramarine blue. Just start putting in some sort of blue skies. This is going to get progressively darker as I go. Now I'm just kind of lightening up a little bit of this midsection here. I want to keep the, the light in the background. A little more light red. Just letting the color do it, or the water do its thing. Now we're going to come in with a little ultramarine blue mixed with a little alizarin crimson and just a little bit of white gouache. And we're going to progressively darken the clouds above while keeping that little white area open. Mixing a little uh, white gouache here with, again, with some ultramarine blue, some Payne's gray. And it's going to take some overlapping wet and wet gouaches to get this as dark as I want it here. Again, leaving that lit area open. Kind of doing a little dabbing in there. Trying to keep them cloud shapes to look like clouds. Again, progressively darker, still a little bit of white gouache on the brush. Again, just dabbing in, keeping that center glow going. And I'm just feeling this out. This one I'm just going as I go. There's no reference picture. This is just something out of my head. Just get in there and start having fun. That's what it's about. Just think of something in your mind and just, just let your imagination go. I had an idea in my head that I wanted a sky to look sort of like this. And I'm just doing a little area here. I know there's going to be water on the bottom. I was thinking about maybe putting a ship in of some kind and just winging it. A little bit of white on my brush. And we're still fairly wet here.
Okay, we've just done a quick dry. Uh, um, I've edited out the uh, hair dryer there. And you can see now how much that has dried back. Very soft looking compared to what we had when it was wet. Now, I'm going to start putting in this ship and I'm taking some burnt umber right off the bat. Probably just a little too heavy. But that's okay. We want to get a nice old wooden ship effect. Just think of a shape. I'm just going with a shape in my head. I'm not referring to any photos or anything. Maybe pictures I've seen in the past, but um, I'm just... And I've painted a few ships, of course, so I'm just kind of going by that. Varying in a little darker browns here. And don't worry if, you, you know, if you're painting something out of your imagination, don't worry about its exactness. I mean, if you want to sell this painting to a, a, a sailing expert, well, then you might have a problem. But just do it for your own fun, your own practice, just to wing it and enjoy what you're doing. Most people are not going to realize if a sail is out of place or a shape of a boat is not exact. Just just have fun. You can re refer to a f photo if you want to and make it perfect. Some people do. Some people are, are meticulous in that way, and that's good too. I put a little light red in there just to get some... vary in color and now I'm just doing a little dry brush just leaving a little white so you can almost see the top of the deck in a sense I like to take advantage of the grain of the paper I use a toothier paper I'm taking a toothbrush here with some spattering of just clean water just to break up the solids. Sometimes things look a little too solid. It's not a bad idea to take a little flick a little water on there. Let it run. Let it play. Manipulate it. Bend it to your will, but let it do what it does. Because it's sometimes in the effects of what happens with the water when it runs and dries that make a difference. Putting a mast in now, just do a single mast boat. Just run a straight line down. And we'll put a couple of lines here where the back sail would be. It's a number three rigger I'm using now. Just kind of guessing at this. Again, it's about the fun, not about the accuracy. Just going by shapes. A little dry brush brushing for that front of the boat. A dry brushing, when you utilize the paper, it almost looks like there's little details there, in my opinion. Here's just some rigging here. Just sort of guessing where that would be. You could probably go online and look at hundreds of pictures of boats and get an idea of, you know, for accuracy. Now I'm just putting in some shapes where there might be some things on deck and sometimes I'll just randomly brush some things okay moving right along taking some white gouache here and just a light coating of it just to create the shape of where this sail would be there's a here a bit of brown on there, which is okay. Look like a dirty sail as we go here. And we'll just sort of guess it. There should be almost like two front sails here, in my mind. Just 
just again sort of guessing where they might be just kind of approximating where they might fall okay just coming in a little bit stronger now with that white wash Kind of layering it a little bit. And again, just a stronger amount of that white wash again. Don't get too fussy with it if you're trying this. I'm gonna blend in some burnt umber here just to try to get some aged look to it. Maybe some wrinkles in the sail. Just what I'm seeing in my mind anyways. Blends in nicely with the gouache. Just flicking a little clean water with a toothbrush just to kind of break that up a little bit. Okay, so underneath, I'm putting some darker strokes, kind of a brownish, purplish almost effect, create a little bit of a shadow, a darker area, just to kind of make the boat appear to be sitting in the water. Kind of a combination of what's in the sky, but just darker. And while I got some dark on the brush, I'm just going to work on darkening that hull of that boat. It looks like realistic wood. And just a little bit darker. A little dry back some. Give it a little spray with the spray bottle and that'll break it up too. You can use the toothbrush, spray bottles a little finer. And just touch up little areas as you go using the hake, the medium hake. Some quick little housekeeping corrections. Just working on that shape as I see it in my head. In theory, it's best to draw something out that you're going to paint. I think it helps a lot of people. Me, I like kind of winging it and just paint as I go along for fun. You know, it's the, it may not be the right way, but I think it's the fun way, just to do something off the top of your head. And if you do it two or three times, you'll be surprised at how much you improve each time you, you paint the same scene. And you use your previous scene for a reference, and then you... you correct upon that. It's almost like having a drawing first, but you just painted it. So I'm taking some pyrrole red here just to introduce some color into the hull of this ship. Just sort of blending it in. Daniel Smith pyrrole red. It's a good bright red. It's not a bad to have a little small little tube of it just to do little 
really bright things in certain scenes. I'm just taking a little more gouache on the rigger brush and just creating some little highlights. Just putting some random things in here. You'd be surprised. You just kind of randomly dab things in and they, they kind of make sense. I like to put the white on in this case while it's still a little bit wet so it kind of melts into the paint that's already on there. And in some ways, the more sloppily sometimes you add things, the more random they look. I'm taking a little cerulean blue here and just putting a little more color in there and just in some random places. Just like if you saw an old boat and there might be paint peeling off of it, sometimes you'll see some blue and some red. And again, just some little, little details of white gouache. And it looks like there's people on board or little things sticking up on the boat. Quick dry. There's a lot of paint on here at the moment. So just a quick dry. Taking some more white gouache, just some heavier layers here. Just kind of forming this into what in my mind maybe looks more like a sail. old sail it's seen a lot of a lot of action nice thing about layering is you can kind of do it till you get it right if it's the same color you don't have to worry about it so much turning into mud Still working with the sail, just forming it. Come on with some little darker colors just to sort of shape it. Again, creating some little folds or bends. And blending it in with the white. little dry brushing just to enhance the areas I might have lost a little bit. It dried back. Some random little scribbles. Again with the number three rigger. Shading some of the hull now. Still a little wet. Just want to look like old, 
like an old wooden ship. And I'm just taking my finger and just doing a little blending. That white gouache stays open pretty good, so you can do that as needed. This video is going a little bit longer than my usual. I hope you're enjoying it. Hope, hopefully it's not too boring. <laughs> By the time this video is uploaded, I should have hit about 600 subscribers. I do appreciate everyone who's watching, and I do hope that this is helping your painting to make you paint freer, looser, and just have a whole different perspective on it, make you feel like you can do anything. So again, we're into some little details here. Just until you get to where you're happy with it. And a quick dry. And you can see how that's drying now that I've hit it with the hair dryer. Quite a bit of paint on the hull, probably too much. Problem when you put too much paint on in darker areas, it tends to reflect. I'm just gonna contrast that with some additional shadowing underneath. Sort of a very dark purple. A couple night, a couple weeks ago, late at night, that show Summer Rental was on with John Candy. Where he goes sailing. I think that's why I had this picture in my head. And he enters some regatta with this old boat. Not a great movie, but it's kind of like when you just kind of sit there and veg out and watch. A little spray just to break up that shadow down below. little flick with the clean water on the toothbrush and we're nearing the end I'm just gonna put a couple little birds in a couple of choice spaces see how that reddish area dried back so so much that I had mentioned you can barely even see it now and just a few more flicks with the toothbrush Just kind of blending some things. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this. Please leave a comment, subscribe, and let's, uh, let's take a look at this from across the room. So here's what it looks like from far away. And what I did was I actually added a little white gouache down below the ship uh, with a little stippling brush just to add little water effects. I thought it was needed. I think it helped. And it looks like the boat is in motion. And I created just a few little streaks across. Uh, when the camera wasn't rolling, I think you can kind of imagine what I did there. Um, again, thanks everybody for watching so much. Please comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Make yourself a great day.